On March the 14th, 2008, Tibetans took to the streets in Lhasa in an unprecedented revolt against the Chinese authorities. The revolt turned violent and protests spread like wildfire across Tibet. The Olympic torch was under attack around the world and suddenly, China's global coming out party at the Beijing Olympics was under threat. Many Chinese blame Tibet's exiled spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, and his friends in the West for orchestrating the unrest. But no evidence has been made public. And while Tibet has experienced some of the fastest growth in China, many Tibetans say the hearts and minds of their people have been left behind. And some are growing more militant. Inside Tibet, it's an imprisonable offense even to have a photo of the Dalai Lama. China seems to view him as the largest obstacle to stability and sovereignty. But he claims to have abandoned the cause of independence, and many see him as a vital part of the solution. I fully committed about one China. I fully committed my middle of approach, so don't worry. The problem is that the Chinese simply don't believe him. They claim that both the Dalai Lama and his advisors are separatists who cannot be trusted. That despite the words of peace, dialogue and compassion, their end game is to split Tibet away from China. Yet what seems to be important to most Tibetans is that he returns to his homeland. Uh, they're expressing that I should come to Tibet as soon as possible. But time is not on his side. And is he sincere in his aim of autonomy, not independence? And are the Chinese sincere in their recent offer to talk meaningfully to the Dalai Lama's side? For the last three years, this film has had unprecedented access to the Dalai Lama and his inner circle, known by the Chinese as the Dalai clique. The footage of the actions and reactions of the Tibetan leader and those around him will inevitably be scrutinized carefully by those in Beijing. And for that reason, there's no voiceover. The Dalai Lama can speak for himself, and you can make up your own mind. Prime Minister Paul Martin has agreed to meet the Dalai Lama when he comes to Ottawa. The visit has sparked controversy. The government of China has rebuked Prime Minister Paul Martin for agreeing to meet with the exiled Tibetan spiritual leader in Ottawa next week. He's uh, aware that he's asked his people to be patient for almost half a century. Yes. And now the young generation is probably losing that patience. Specifically, what should Canada be doing to accelerate democratic reform? The Dalai Lama advised us in the context of our friendship with China. Uh, we're a relatively small country. China is a powerful country that's likely to become more powerful. friendly context. Uh, and to talk about the importance, ultimately, of human rights uh, as a friend. But that doesn't stop us from expressing our views and our perspectives, and I think we should do that more vigorously. In the context of a visiting religious leader, saying he's 80% a Buddhist monk, not really a politician. <laughs> Canada, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Notwithstanding the, the tremendously profitable trade relationship we have with China, we cannot close our eyes to these things. These are serious problems. They are a front not only to, uh, to what we'd like to see happen to China, they're an affront to humanity, and these things have to change. But that doesn't mean we stay silent about the things we don't agree with. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thanks. Welcome, everybody, and uh, welcome to this press conference. Uh, well, I'm not saying independence. Uh, I believe if we remain within the people's problem of China, we might get greater benefit. Compared with uh, the attitude of the Chinese leaders in the early ages, I found that this time some of the leaders that I met with in Beijing are much more relaxed uh, and also for the first time willing to listen to our views. This, I think, is an opportunity for the Chinese side to demonstrate their sincerity, their willingness. Uh, because among the Tibetans, even among international observers, there is a great deal of uh, skeptical uh, attitude. Are the Chinese really very sincere? Are they conducting this exercise mainly because of the international pressure? Or are they really giving serious thought to uh, resolve this issue through dialogue. <laughs> Prime Minister Paul Martin met with the Dalai Lama, something none of his predecessors has done, and despite strong objections from China. It was called an interfaith spiritual gathering, but it's very much about delicate global politics. This is the image that will infuriate the Chinese. We did discuss uh, human rights. Uh, we discussed human rights generally, and we discussed human rights uh, in Tibet. That is not what China wanted. Chinese officials remain opposed to the visit because they say the Dalai Lama is a politician in exile, engaged in activities aimed at splitting China. The uh, only question is how much they can do. But oh, that's a, a question. Uh, and also they have to take sort of serious sort of consideration about their good relation with China. Do you ever wish you weren't the Dalai Lama? No, 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 no. Uh, the fact is fact. I'm the Dalai Lama. <laughs> and if I do like, utilize uh, my name properly, then also it's one uh, sort of benefit, one advantage. And the training of Buddhism must help, I imagine, enormously. No special training, no. nothing, ordinary. But I'm, I was very, very lazy with this student. <laughs> I think because my mind is quite sharp, so I easily can learn. So the, uh, the effort, very little. <laughs> so very lazy. <laughs> This is the last time we'll see you. Mm -hmm. Love you. How about no longer being masochistic? How about remembering your divinity? Do you ever get nervous on events like this? 
Almost done. Almost did, done. You, did you ever get nervous? Hmm? Did, did you get nervous before? Oh, yes. In 1954, my first meeting with Chairman Mo, very nervous. <laughs> and especially Chairman Mo, I think some special thing, special quality, is he can treat new person as an old man. One question, would you get nervous with the Chinese being Premier now, do you think? I don't think. <laughs> now older, getting older, more experience. <laughs> A man who has tirelessly traveled the planet with his message of nonviolence. Some people, you see, came to see me with the belief uh, that Dalai Lama has some kind of miracle power <laughs> or healing power. Then that's really nonsense. Right? Hmm? <laughs> Sometimes the people introduce himself or herself, they have some kind of healing power. <laughs> of course, while I say, oh, very good, very good, but in my mind, <laughs> uh, in my mind, very skeptical, very, very skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> now, many of our suffering or problems are essentially man-made. I think like the 11th uh, September was a tragedy, unbelievable sort of event. These things are not happen suddenly, but uh, many causes conditions. And among the causes conditions, one prime thing is hatred. We must look from wider perspective and you can see, uh, I think today's world, I think rule of hatred Limited. Rule of compassion is vast. Clear. The Chinese Prime Minister Wen Xiaobao meets Tony Blair today. Officially, they're talking about trade and how to strengthen political ties. But no doubt, the question of human rights will be discussed in diplomatic terms, including, of course, the question of Tibet. Alison Reynolds of the Free Tibet Campaign believes the British government is well-placed to influence the Chinese. We know from former Chinese President Jiang Zemin that he did take note of a request by Tony Blair that he talked to the Dalai Lama. Now, this could be one of Blair's good news stories. This could be a non-violent resolution to a long-standing conflict. We are pushing against a door that's ajar now. There has been some contact between Beijing and representatives of the Dalai Lama. So we would like the British Prime Minister to secure from Wen Jiaobao a promise that those talks will proceed. The Chinese government, the Chinese authority use their common sense, then I think My approach is actually helping them. I think it might be useful regarding st stability and unity. The Chinese government of course, understandably, their sort of way of approach to all problems, very cautious. It's important. Yeah. 
say it's time for the Dalai Lama to return. Do you agree? Well, we would like a unity within the sovereign. So, as long as unity of the sovereign is respected, the door of negotiation is wide open. Would you be happy to be a citizen of the Republic of China? Oh, yes. If something good, certainly, no problem. So that's why we are not seeing independence. As far as I know, the, the Dalai Lama would be happy to be a Chinese citizen. Well, the, the, that, uh, the, as long as uh, uh, individuals or groups or whatever recognize that overall and one's sovereign, sovereignty and um, every uh, channel of uh, negotiation is always open. Audience, Tibetan, who recently come, then some, I think, from uh, Ladakh. These, these are Tibetans who've come over from Tibet? Yes. Recently? That's right. So every, I think almost every month, some Tibetans now come. So I always meet them and give them some, let's say, encouragement. <laughs> That's my duty. <laughs> a lot of them come to see you? Yes. I think with unrealistic expectation. Which one was it? Maybe five one. She was in the way. She was in the way. She was in the way. Gemmy Many of them return. So, uh, in the past, uh, because here, free country, no immediate danger. So they sometimes, due to our careless, carelessness, when these people return, some gets arrest. Well, why do you think the Chinese do that? <laughs> Ask them. <laughs> Obviously, I'm reactionary. They consider splitist, anti-communist, communist party or anti-China, anti-Chinese people, even anti-Tibetan people. 
Kata da hindi. Kızan iyi gidiyor mudur be? Doğru. Ta ana kaçıyor daha ne? ちょっと待ってくれ。ちょっと待ってくれ。ちょっと待ってくれ。ちょっと待ってくれ。ちょっと待ってくれ。ちょっと待ってくれ。ちょっと待ってくれ。ちょっと待ってくれ。ちょっ
did he tell you what was discussed with Premier Wen Jiabao earlier in the month? Yes, he mentioned so when they met, so they raised this a debate issue. They found the Chinese attitude rather strong. And did they have any news about when the Chinese might invite the envoys back to Beijing? No. So I told him, we are hoping within a uh, few months another visit uh, may go, I told. If there's no positive result from, from the, the visits, w would you consider going back to Tibet un unconditionally? I mean, without uh, the certain limited sort of freedom, there no use to go. Then, <laughs> uh, perhaps if the present situation has been in a few years, then we'll go like this way. But Tibetan nation. Will Tanti ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
is running out for Tibet. Every day while we are sitting here praying for world peace, inside Tibet there's more and more and more and more Chinese moving in. And as I see it, the Chinese are playing for time and we are playing into their hands. Recently, the Chinese invited the special envoys of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Beijing for a paid holiday. In the meanwhile, more and more and more Chinese in Tibet. No, officially, senior Chinese leaders have already mentioned plans to resettle some 30 million in Tibet. The truth is, they could and they will send in a hundred million and still have too many left. This thing about hoping for talks, talking about talks, waiting for talks. I've always been saying it takes two to shake hands, but only one to throw a punch. I have outlined what I've called my strategy of the mosquito, where the soft underbelly of China's increasingly market-oriented economy. Now that is vulnerable to all manner of action. Paya chebi na Quran su shena chi shu ti jangul mu chi ku su jin dang ze ba chi de to la shena chi gi yo re ta ngai du paya chebi na kan de shen ne jangul mu chi pa bu dan jana den di shu ne en chi ke ze ba chi le nyu ru ta ya gi ta chi che tu gu yu to ya me na kan de shen ne jangul mu chi pa pe mo wa ne ก็สิชาซานเอ่อฉลอเลเจอร์จุยาเทฟชิกุดโลกอเมริกาเซมดุคุณจะตาชุติกิยามาเดกันเนชิชุติโลกอเมริกาตาชุมาติบะตายินเ
Would you call this negotiation or not yet? Not yet. Not yet. As I mentioned before, they try to build, try to build confidence. So each visit certainly makes some contribution regarding uh, building up of confidence. So that's my view. I told them that it will take time, so a few more years. Uh, some people you say, have so much sort of attachment to your own birthplace or your own land. So that's not important. But the important is the opportunity to serve some sort of varsity, some contribution. People put a lot of trust, a lot of hope, faith. So I have moral responsibility to see them, to help them. But when it comes, I don't know. Still too early to say. <laughs> speak with you about some of our recent work on transforming the emotional mind. And I will be talking about it from a neuroscience perspective. Ninety-one. <laughs> 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 だてもくろちむれえ、とんじじじんがや。千里ぐなね。たなんで、ちょろしょろぐよするし。どう。で、なんかしましょき。だてが、たまんごんずじやで、ま、げきた、みちぎ。もうね、だじ千里じゃ、
Yes. Could you tell me where we are? The center of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Buddha Gaya. I think in Buddhist world, uh, this place is considered most sacred place. Because Buddha Shakya Muni, about 2000, more than 2500 years ago, you see, he actually achieved enlightenment in, under this tree. So that's how I believe. So now we become refugee. <laughs> now last more than 45 years. <laughs> many occasions, very easily can reach here. That's very fortunate. <laughs> Sanya <laughs> Shara Suja Sigorti Zuka Leta Yayan Chik Nezu Mangutalia Duling Pogravji Junje Dos Jundu Tom Javin Dukala Tangaransu Rumich number two Jeji Nala Matsu Lengu Shu Chung Tanya Chetore Matsu Mula Dosuti Ranguchi Yomare Naranzu Kosa Muspene becoming Naja Paso Dulina Venetantri Ditone Tevine Some <laughs> I think I'm going to be in a 
我们这样的人<音><音><音><音><音><音><音> The whole life then become single person, more freedom. If you are determined to practice spirituality, then, then no interference. But if you uh, 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 really carry uh, sincerely, then like that. But if you just change clothes, it's not much meaning. <laughs> Tenzin, the Belgian trip, I hear there's been a, a slight delay. The King of Belgium is planning to visit uh, China at the same time His Holiness was visiting Belgium. So as usual, His Holiness doesn't want to provide any inconvenience to any government. So His Holiness felt it would be better if he, if he uh, indefinitely postponed the visit so that it didn't coincide with the royal visit to the PRC. It had nothing to do with the Chinese pressure. No, His Holiness has felt that it was in a suitable time. <laughs> Nieuws met Birgit van Mol. De Dalai Lama, de spirituele leider van Tibet, komt in juni niet naar België. Het ziet er naar uit dat hij onder druk is gezet door China. Want koning Albert gaat net op dat moment naar Peking. Wel toevallig uh, viel dat samen met het uh, officieel bezoek van koning Albert uh, aan China. We hebben dat uh, voorgelegd aan de Dalai Lama. En de Dalai Lama heeft uh, zelf uh, zonder enige druk beslist... Uh, om niet te komen, omdat het een algemene beleidslijn is van de Dalai Lama, geen problemen te willen maken tussen China en derde landen. Paus Johannes Paulus heeft vanmorgen het zondaggebed Angelus gebeden van op zijn ziekenbed. Normaal geeft de katholiek. I think what happened was, you know, his Holiness found out that his visit to Belgium uh, coincides with the visit of the Belgian king's state visit to the People's Republic of China. So in order not to pose any obstacle or you know, cause unnecessary friction, he decided to postpone his visit. What it says here on this news site. What does it say? 
The problem was submitted to the Dalai Lama, who has a policy of not wanting to harm relations between third countries and China. The Dalai Lama took his decision in all freedom. Is that true? Uh, I have no comment on that. I've heard about your trip to Belgium. Huh. I've heard that it's been cancelled. Yes. Are you sad about that? No. Usually, I do not want to create any sort of inconvenience to concern government. So it seems the Belgian government find a little inconvenience. So okay. Although some sort of uh, I mean, the group of people who invite me give teaching. Certainly, uh, they disappoint. Been waiting five years for it, I hear. Mm. They've been waiting five years. Mm. That's the reality. <laughs> It's possible. Is it there just for say, because of that, pretended? They still uh, not believe Dalai Lama. If they say now Dalai Lama is sincerely committed about midwife approach, meantime not allowed to, 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 to China, that's a big contradiction. How to explain to Chinese people? If among the public, Dalai Lama more popular than communist. So Dalai Lama return to China. That is impossible. And also there are greatest fear if I go to Tibet, Tibetan people's emotion may express, then things become out of control. So till you see, they feel safe, they have to show their own people that Dalai Lama still is committing wrongdoing. <laughs> My interest is past and past, look future. Future, two separate nations for common interest must come together, live together work together for common interest. Now, this is time. Freedom freedom do you think most Tibetans would be happy to be Chinese citizens? Once they, they saw the beneficial 
Oh, we are proud. Our citizens are people from China. Huge country, big country, prosperity. We need better education, better road, a better economy. We accepted that, we welcomed that. Uh, actually, we feel grateful. So therefore, we will be better situation if we remain with the people of China. Then, real union, happy union. In the Chinese mind, they are so suspicious and they say they have doubts about your sincerity. If President Hu Jintao was sitting here, what would you say to him? Come here, watch what we are doing. And if necessary, go through all our fire, uh, file. Then they may convince. Otherwise, word. Really, sometimes I personally feel that His Holiness has been too patient. Since three, four years ago, I would have given up. Really. You know, in spite of all the concession that His Holiness made, and in spite of all this really sincere efforts he made to convince the Tibetans that this path that he's following, not asking for independence. One time, I met some youth who want uh, some critical about my approach. And I told them, yes, now, short moment, let us think about violence. Then we need weapon. Just a few hundred weapon is nothing. At least, uh, more than 100,000. And first, from where we will get? From Indian government? No. From rest of Asian country? No. Even Western countries? I don't think. Then, most important, how to send to Tibet? Finally, to Chinese, elimination of 100,000 is nothing. For us, even 100, difficult. His Holiness now says, you know, after so many years, there's been no concrete response from the Chinese side, and therefore, that I'm leaving it to the people to decide. Nobody could blame His Holiness. Is there any way that you might change your approach? Or will you always be? No. So long, I'm alive, no. The least they could do is to give some indication that the compromise that His Holiness made is being viewed in a favorable light. Nothing. Do you ever have moments of doubt? No. Never? Never. If I die today, no worry. Only worry is what happened to Tibet. Because they, whether because of the practically or because of the uh, uh, realistically or unrealistically, is a too much sort of, of the, uh, expectation on me. I'm quite sure if I if news come, Dalai Lama die, I think many Tibetan, at least I think several thousand will die. Shock or almost a suicide. That happened, I feel, including some Chinese. How does that make you feel? Hmm? How does that make you feel? Oh, determined I should leave.
When the Dalai Lama walks into the Capitol Rotunda today, he will both accept the nation's most prestigious civilian award and once again incur the wrath of the Chinese government. The Chinese government lobbied hard to stop the congressional award from being presented to the Tibetan spiritual leader. But not only will the ceremony go ahead today, President Bush will speak at the presentation, making it the first time a U.S. president appears in public with the Dalai Lama. U.S. presidents have met privately with the Dalai Lama for years. But it wasn't until today that any of them had lent the prestige of the office to a public event in his honor. You join a growing list of world leaders who are stepping forward to say in public what the world has long known the Tibetan people have a right to their heritage, their freedom, and the man we honor today is not only courageous, but also right to demand both. The U.S. Congress stands with Tibet. Thank you, Mark. Over the years, Congress has conferred the gold medal on many great figures in history, usually at a time when their struggles were over and won. Today, Congress has chosen to do something different. It has conferred this honor on a figure whose work continues and whose outcome remains uncertain. In doing so, America raises its voice in the call for religious liberty and basic human rights. Americans cannot look to the plight of the religiously oppressed and close their eyes or turn away. And that is why I will continue to urge the leaders of China to welcome the Dalai Lama to China. They will find this good man to be a man of peace and reconciliation. The official Chinese news agency has reported that 10 people are confirmed dead in the riots. Uh, the official Chinese the death toll now has, uh, has climbed up to 16. But Tibet's government in exile, led by the Dalai Lama, says that 100 people have been killed. Some of very, them very difficult to tell. Uh, journalists have still been banned from going independently to Tibet. And, uh, we... around the city last night, you could see that there were huge numbers of burnt-out shops. You could still smell smoke in the air. There are obvious signs that there had been a very dramatic and violent event in this area a couple of weeks ago. The week-long protests in Tibet over Beijing's rule have now spread to neighboring parts of China. It's believed the unrest started after China exile China believes Tibet that uh, its rule in Tibet, 57 years of direct control in Tibet, is working despite widespread anger from Tibetans at that Chinese rule. Awesome. The Chinese government continues to accuse the Dalai Lama of being behind the protests Seven. in Tibet. The man in charge of the Olympic Games, Jacques Rocha, has said the Games are facing a crisis because of anti-China protests. Thanks. Right now, China is feeling a little bit bashed and knocked about. It had planned its torch relay to be a journey of harmony across 21 countries. Instead, it's had to deal with pictures of scuffles and protests, and there are still... I am a Buddhist monk. There's something very, very dear to me. The exiled spiritual leader of Tibet, the Dalai Lama, has said the Chinese people deserve to hold the Olympic Games. He said Tibetans were not anti-Chinese. The Dalai Lama has an immense, incredible vision. He's not only thinking of Tibetans, you know, he's thinking of Chinese. He is a Buddhist leader. He's not just a Tibetan leader. And as a Buddhist leader, he's trying to think of all beings. And he's, he's trying to think of China as much as Tibet. China said today that it is now ready to talk again to representatives of the Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. China has held such talks before, and it does look as if China is reacting to the international criticism of its recent... And I think a lot of Tibetans Tibet. are going to see this as a delaying tactic, but we'll have to wait and see. Maybe the Chinese will, will pull something out of the hat and actually produce some uh, progress here.
whether I am really reincarnation of a previous life of a previous Pararam or not, I don't know. And quite often in my dream, I recognize myself, I am Buddhist monk. Uh, almost I never sort of dreamt uh, I am Dalai Lama. So the, the real identity uh, me is monk, Buddhist monk. Nobody can change that. Come on. 